Warning, we are about to spoil the movie 1408. If you haven't seen the movie and you plan on watching it, leave now and come back later. But if you have seen it or you just don't care, then please stick around. You really shouldn't watch this movie. It will ruin all other ghost movies for you. So tell you, you will get showings of both Scary Godmother 1 and 2 on IMAX. But only if you don't watch this movie. I have the tickets both right movies. here for you. Yeah, both movies. I have the tickets right here, man. Okay. All right. We got ourselves a deal then? I'm still going to watch the movie. Son of a bitch! Hello there, ghouls, gals, and all non-binary pals. Welcome to Cinema Boulette. Here, right now, is the very special Halloween episode that we're doing for you guys. Our main cheat episode of the year. Yes, in which we just review a really fucking good horror movie, usually. <laughs> it, well... Usually. We, we've we done one Halloween special before this. And it is two of the greatest movies ever made. So. Two of the best Halloween movies. Absolutely. Especially. So, <laughs> we had Weeby Gamers for that one. He is not present for this one. So Not this one. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. We're excited to do this because this is, honestly, one of our favorite ghost movies. This is my favorite ghost movie. That's Justin's favorite ghost movie. So, um, yeah, this is the Stephen King adaptation, 1408. This is it. I was really trying to think of a clever joke for the the silence yeah. we just did. <laughs> I got nothing. You know, I thought this room was supposed to be scary with loud noises, but it was just nothing. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll roll with that. I think uh, I'm more laughing because it doesn't really work, but it sure. Doesn't. It doesn't, I know. I just said it because it was so stupid. Uh <laughs> Yeah, uh, 1408, this is, oh, when, what fucking year was it? 2007, I think. Yeah, I'm thinking 07 as well. I'll look that up just to be certain. Just to be sure. Or, uh, it's based off a Stephen King short story that I never read, because reading is for nerds, unlike all the movies and anime we watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I'm much more of a reader than Justin. Excuse me, I read tweets all the time. As do I, and we make tweets all the time. <clears throat> at our Twitter, at yep. Roulette Cinema. Exactly. Where for some reason flip those around. <laughs> well, you had to because Cinema Roulette was already taken. I think. I'm pretty I don't sure. know, it just auto-did it, so. Did it? Okay, well. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yep, it was 07, you were right. Yeah, awesome. All right. Directed by the same guy who did Escape Plan strangely uh, <laughs> yeah that's an odd one mm-hmm. uh, and apparently the budget was 25 million <laughs> honestly for all the shit they do in this room yeah I'm not surprised i can see it but uh we will get to the really good practical effects later also probably just the underwater oh, parts yeah. that too those were beautifully shot <laughs> beautifully shot it also probably a bitch yeah I'm trying to think think of banter, but I'll, I'll, we'll just get to the synapses. Let's just get into the synapses. <laughs> oh, um, I will say now a trigger warning of suicide throughout the entire film. Suicide and uh, deaths in the family. Yes. So. So we have a struggling author named Mike. Mike goes to haunted places and writes about how spooky or just not spooky at all they are. <laughs> Basically, those cheap books you see all the time of like top 10 most haunted mansions in America. And he's he's not having a great time. He, his career is kind of in the toilet. He did write something that 
he did write actual fiction at one point when he was a more hopeful human being for some reason. Yeah. Uh, I remember when I was five as well. Uh... <laughs> God damn it. But he's out in California. Monk is telling him that he's doing a great job and just needs to finish this next book. And it is literally the actor who plays Monk in Monk. Yep. <laughs> Tony Sh- <laughs> Tony Shalab, that's his name. Or Shalub Shalab, one of the two. Don't know. Tony! <laughs> Tony! <laughs> uh, he goes surfing. Get He gets in a bit of an accident with a wave, almost drowns, but is saved by not Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> yeah, it's Leon uh, Kennedy. I could have said he's saved by Leon Kennedy. <laughs> Shit. Sorry, I didn't know you were going for it. <laughs> Dang. Didn't mean to interrupt you there. No, your fucking place. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in your lane, fun. <laughs> I, I know I'm gonna burst laughing in the theater once he says that or she. Yeah, that. Oh, even the trailer. That line is stupid. That's silly. But after this, he's fine. Go goes to get his mail and finds an odd note. It says. Don't stay in 1408. Odd. Okay. He he calls up the hotel and he's like, okay, give me your room 1408. It's not available. Next week. Nope. Next month. Nope. Next year. Goodbye. He doesn't even say goodbye. He just hangs up the phone. Oh, yeah. He just hangs up. So he talks to his publisher and the publisher through a some civil rights law. They are, the hotel is unable to refuse him a room if it is available. And he, he goes there. Samuel L. Jackson is the manager and he takes him to the back office and is like, okay, don't go in that room. I will give you this fine whiskey. I will give you all the information on the room because it's been evil for like 95 years 56 people have died in there. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's like, and here's all the death reports. Here's photos. Put it. Yeah. Go nuts. Write us, you know, just make it up. Write a story. You don't have to actually stay the night in there. But Mike still said, Mike takes the notes. He takes the alcohol. It still says he's going in the room. We even find out they do clean the room once a month, but they work as if the room is filled with toxic gas and switch out which maid is in there after 10 minutes. Yep, every 10 minutes, because they found that's kind of the length. That's kind of the limit. And also, no one has lasted more than an hour in that room. Yep. And by no one lasts more than an hour, I mean they're usually dead within an hour. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, even one of the maids got locked in the bathroom at one point and stabbed her own eyes out within 10 minutes. He goes in, given multiple chances to leave. Like, he's going through the notes, and he actually does a full circle of the hallway. Yeah, and the elevator just opens for him. <laughs> Gets multiple chances to leave the room. Decides, no, nah, he's he's not going to fall for their tricks. Mm-hmm. And then it only just begun by the Carpenters comes on the clock. <laughs> on the clock radio he after um getting a maintenance guy to help him fix the ac because the maintenance guy will not step into the room <laughs> seeing some chocolates appear on his bed the toilet paper gets folded nicely even though he messed it up radio pops on again goes for the door oh wait his hand gets caught in the window and like starts it slams shut in. He starts bleeding. Everything just starts going wrong. I'm I'm not gonna go over exactly every single way the ghost fuck with him. I was losing my pacing. The clock gets unplugged from the wall out of his own annoyance. He tries to call the help desk and no one's being actual like he's saying things and she is somewhat res- responding to him. But also isn't. Yeah. To the point where he thinks they are fucking with him. And... 
the clock all of a sudden, even though unplugged, sets to 60 minutes. Because, again, no one's lasted an hour. If I remember cor I'm pretty sure on this. I didn't check while we were watching the movie this time. But once that clock starts, it is actually an hour till that clock ends. Yeah, that's till, that's a really cool touch. Not till the movie ends, though, but we'll get to that in a sec. Yep. There is no escape. Doesn't The knife... Uh, no, the knife doesn't break. But when he tries to go for... He does pick it. Tries to go for the knob. The knob falls off, looks through the door, and there's an eye looking back. He tries getting someone's attention across the road. It's him. We'll <laughs> talk about that scene. It's so fun. It's a... Oh, it's such a good moment of when things are really starting to go wrong. Hell yeah, it's a great horror sequence. He even tries going out on the windowsill and shimmying over to the room next to him, but it turns into a wall of nothing and he has to go back in the room and he sees, like, the fire 1808 in a black void and says, you are here. Yup. Um, and then don't forget about that fucking reveal as well. Which reveal? Where he's listening to the tape and, and then he says, like, odd that there's no window. Oh, yeah, he has a tape recorder as a writer so that way he can take... He doesn't have to be writing everything down, he can listen to it later. And he replays the tape and it literally is him going... It's odd how this room has no windows because they get uh, blocked off by uh, bricks. Yep. <laughs> he sees a home video of his daughter and his wife. He sees his dad, who kind of yells at him, and it was left in an old folks' home, basically. Uh, we find out his daughter died. <laughs> like, she passed away. I forget... This isn't the point where we find out exactly what happened, but the daughter is dead. Yeah, we, it is at this point heavily implied that she's dead. <laughs> uh, he pulls out his laptop and tries to contact his wife, uh, Lily, who lives... I forgot to mention the hotel's in New York. His wife is also in New York. And the connection is bad because, of, co of course, goes fuck with electronics. That's how it always is. <laughs> he... There's also some religious theme to the movie, and he goes, he's like, fine, you win, and he goes to the, you know, the Bible that's in every hotel room, opens up, and it's completely blank. Yeah. <clears throat> Cause because because of uh, the death of his daughter, he's kind of, like, jaded, and he, like, kept saying, like, oh, the God that doesn't exist or whatever, so I guess they do that just to fuck with him. <laughs> yeah. Um. Tur the room becomes below freezing. He he hears his wife on the computer again because the computer was destroyed by water. Yep. Uh, goes over trying to talk to her more because she called the cops after he got in contact and they were apparently in the room and found nothing. Uh, all of a sudden, the camera footage becomes clear and he's talking except he isn't, and invites her over. The ghosts are like, well, she'll be here soon. Paintings in the room come to life, the room floods, and he wakes up back at the surf, with a surfing accident. And he's very confused. I Does he wake up in the hospital as well? Yeah. <clears throat> And, yeah. Oh, yeah, and his wife is there because she was next of kin still. Yep, and uh, he was like, you drove all the way here just for me? <laughs> yeah, uh, he also hadn't talked to his wife since uh, their daughter passed away. Like, he drove off. Yeah, because she's saying during the initial Skype call, she's like, I have heard nothing from you for, like, a year, and all of a sudden now you pop up on my computer while I'm working? Okay. Yeah. Which, also, you're working, you have Yahoo Messenger open? Like, come on, Lee. I mean, I know this is 07, but still, Jesus. <laughs> Jeez, Skype exists. Yeah. It's not great, but it's better than Messenger. <laughs> is Yahoo Messenger still a thing? I don't know. I don't either. There's a couple things I'm surprised are still things. But, yeah, he wakes up in the hospital... And weeks pass. He doesn't find the note to 
go 1408 in his mail. He writes the whole story because it's so vivid in his mind. And he goes to turn in the... And again, weeks have passed. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> it's like a... I think uh, this is a good 10 minutes of the movie. And then he goes to deliver the man to ship out the manuscript to his publisher. And all of a sudden the bellhop is at the post office. Mm. And then all the men start tearing down the walls to reveal he's back in the room. Yep. I, it's a really clever, it's a really clever transition. Cause yeah, they literally just destroy the walls and it's the room, which means it it's, a, <laughs> it's a smash back to reality. Hey, <laughs> Whoops, there goes gravity. Uh, and the room is just in fuck shambles at this point. He sees his daughter's coffin in a furnace in the fridge. And, um... Well, he sees his daughter again. And actually gets to hold her. And just told, like... And she's, like, saying, I don't want to leave you type deal. Then dies in his arms, and falls apart to Ash. This breaks him. He just collapses to the floor, just accepting whatever fate is going to happen as the clock counts down the last few seconds. Yeah. And then the room is back to normal. He is back in his clothes, untethered. Everything is back where it was before the hell started. And the phone rings. It's the, it's the front desk again, saying he can re and the clock resets back to an hour. That the phone says you can relive this hour for as many times as you like, or you could take our express checkout. The express checkout, by the way, is just a noose. <laughs> like, like it literally just comes into frame after that it's one of our favorite jokes in the movie <laughs> oh there's so much dark humor in this oh uh, that's great and he's almost considering it and then they also threaten that if he, well he says he's not going to and the ghost says your wife will be up in five minutes <laughs> that's the tipping point yep like he could suffer through this he has a good bottle of whiskey bring bringing his wife into this that's too far and he solves it the only way you can solve ghosts when you don't have a priest yep <laughs> he turns the bottle of booze into a molotov cocktail and just burns the room <laughs> he sits down has uh, his one smoke which he carries around in case a nuclear apocalypse just superstition type deal mm -hmm. and sits there waiting for the room to go up in flames he the ghosts even, like, you hear the screaming in the vents and whatnot, and it just, he just goes, ah, shut up. It's pretty fucking badass. <laughs> uh, the ghosts try to turn on the fire, uh, the fire sprinklers, but he breaks a window, causing in a backdraft, so the thing goes up in flames. Now, which ending do I say? Well, if you guys get the Blu-ray, you're going to be forced for that one ending. But if you get the original DVD release, it's going to be the theatrical ending. Here's where things get a little weird. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll go with the Blu-ray ending because that's probably the one that's most easy to get at the moment. Mm -hmm. And that might be what's on streaming services as well. I don't know. Yep. We have the Blu-ray. We did buy it on stream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, The Blu-ray ending, he dies from this. Uh, Mike dies from this. And we cut to uh, his wife at the funeral. Very big sad. And Samuel Jackson's character comes up trying to give her the few things they got from Mike's uh, of Mike's possession out of the room. She declines and also Samuel Jackson's character tries to explain what actually happened and how his death is not in vain to a person who just went to their husband's funeral. Yeah, 
And this is like this is like literally he walks to them as they're walking out of the graveyard. Like Yeah, this isn't like at her house or something. This is moments after he was put in the ground. Yeah, not not very smart, Sam. Sorry, I gotta say. <laughs> so Samuel Jackson takes the stuff and the tape recorder is still there. Hmm. So he pulls it out and he plays it and hears um Mike talking to his dead daughter. All of a sudden, Samuel Jackson looks in the rearview mirror. Mike's charred body is appears in the back seat as a jump scare. It spooks him. He tosses it away and sees a, a father and daughter going happily off into the graveyard. And then we see Mike in the burnt room grab his ghost daughter's hand and disappear. <laughs> and then the movie ends. Yeah. Uh, the theatrical ending. Just before Mike is engulfed by the flames, the firefighters break into the room and save him. He writes up the manuscript that he wrote in the in the fake reality. He's back together with his wife, and um, she even finds his stuff. Uh, the stuff that was saved from the fire in the room with the tape recorder. She's like, let me just throw this away. Mike set as some memories you can't get rid of and pulls out the tape recorder and plays it. And again, just like with Samuel L. Jackson, uh, plays him talking to his dead daughter. His wife is shocked, drops the box as he just kind of looks at her with sort of a see it did happen type look. <laughs> Not a cocky one, but a very much this is what I went through. And I'm not making any of it up. Yeah. And then the movie ends. <laughs> so yeah, that was 1408. And we actually like the theatrical ending better. I'll just say that right off the bat. Yeah, honestly, the jump scare feels real. I'm, I would have even been fine with him dying. Mm -hmm. And maybe, I think it would have been better if the wife did take the tape, played it, and then heard that. Yeah. That would have been more interesting. But the cheap jump scare and the... Confu I'm pretty sure it's supposed to imply that him and his daughter moved on to heaven or whatever. Mm -hmm. But him standing in the room is kind of confusing. Like, is he now haunting it? Or Yeah, it's very vague. It's very art housey, And I don't know. I, I think it... I, I don't think it really fits with the rest of the movie, honestly. It really doesn't. There, you kind of want the redemption more than the tragedy, I guess. Because mm -hmm. while the main character is a piece of shit, um, like he, he's 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 sympathetic because you can like you can it's good character development because you can see like what jaded him, and there are moments in this movie where he just breaks down. So <laughs> yeah, like at first you're. <laughs> You're okay with all this happening to him because it's like, oh, you were such a prick to everyone. And then it's like, oh, this is why you're an asshole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. Where to start here, though, besides... <clears throat> there were also two other cut endings, but I don't remember what they are. I don't either, and frankly, it doesn't matter because they were... They never... weren't that good. <laughs> they, they weren't that good, and they were never actually in the movie. The two we mentioned are actually, like, released with the movie. The other two were just kind of more deleted scenes, so... <laughs> oh, I will say, too, that on the blu -ray, You could tell the director didn't like the theatrical ending. Mm-hmm. Because on the Blu-ray, it's still DVD quality. They didn't even upgrade it. They upgraded the two endings that were never used. <laughs> yeah. But not the original ending. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <laughs> let's start with probably the best part of this movie, the ghosts. Because this this is a ghost movie. That's kind of the main point of watching this movie. And it's great how they do the ghosts. Yeah, it's fantastic because the ghosts aren't just... It's not just one spirit. It's not just some, some demon being eat... Well, you know being sinister and slowly building up. These are ghosts that know they want you dead. They know that you... They... They want you dead. They don't care about any sense of humanity. They are just dicks fucking around with you till you kill yourself. It's... Yeah, it's pretty great. <clears throat> Literally. Like... 
it, and that's the funny thing about the movie is like it's not about killing them it's not about scaring them it's about actively fucking with them in every way possible including their past their personal lives all that it's like Pennywise, except you are trapped in a room and you can't leave. Yeah. <clears throat> and it, it's so much more effective as well, because, like, you know, it's one thing to be isolated in the middle of nowhere and all that. But here, like, you can see people on the street, but no one can fucking help him. It's scary. Yeah. If he throws something out of the room, it just fades from existence before it hits the ground. Yep. It's almost like a video game thing where it just like pss, and like sparks happen. See, you ha see, just in order to do uh, 1408 skip, you have to get past the kill plane. Uh <laughs> oh, right, right, right. <laughs> but yeah, it's great, and it's I... just honestly such a welcome change from the stereotypical, ooh, we're trying to be scary ghosts. No way, other, one of the ghosts jumped out the room. Never mind. Yeah. Well, no. I was about to wonder, would he be allowed to jump out of the room, or does the ghost specifically want him to die in the yeah, no, because and, and then because Samuel L. Jackson's character said earlier, too, he was like, we've had this many jumpers. So, right, right. He's I think it was like. But. Oh, there's also the fucking scene with the uh, fridge. Yeah. <laughs> like he opens the fridge and then, like Samuel Jackson is in it talking to it. Is that the one? Yeah, like there's a tiny Samuel Jackson in his uh, hotel office being like. Are you enjoying your service, mister? <laughs> then he says his spiel and all that tries to be like, be like, oh, wow, dread or whatever. And then he just fucking like rips everything out, just like throwing it. It's kind of great. <laughs> yeah, because we see that uh, Mike is kind of crazy there because when we cut back out of the fridge and at Mike, it's still just a fully stocked fridge. He tears it apart. He's like, what do you want? <laughs> It's pretty great because he's like, oh, yeah, because he's actually excited at first that there's some paranormal activity. He's like, oh, yes, finally, we got something. He's like, that's new. And then he just kind of breaks down a lot faster than when I first watched this movie. I initially thought he'd break down. <laughs> yeah, because once you realize you can't leave, that raises the stakes a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and I do uh, really like the logic of Mike, where, okay, first try the door, obviously. Mm -hmm. Try kicking it down. I also forgot to mention, he puts the key in to unlock it. The key breaks in half and then gets pulled out the other <laughs> side. You see, he gets sucked into the keyhole. And then he tries throw it. He tries yelling across the street, but that doesn't work. He throws stuff out. That doesn't work. And crossing the crossing the windowsill is a logical step as a last resort. Yeah, exactly. Like he, he's not like in a complete panic. He is still rational about it up to a certain point. Also that fucking window scene. So oh good. yeah. It's so good. <laughs> that really, that's really the moment that sets the tone of how these ghosts will work. Mm -hmm. Cause uh, what happens is he's trying to get the attention of someone right across the street who's saying, in shadow he's waving he, he's trying to get their attention and then they start copying his movement yeah they start mimicking him like exactly like he waves his hand looks around looks out the window in the window and it's like verbatim exactly <laughs> and then he grab he grabs a lamp so the other person does and he sees himself across the street and then a woman comes up behind him with a hammer he, he tries to warn the guy and then looks behind him and she's there. <laughs> oh my god, that moment always freaks me the fuck out. It's, it's just so unnerving. It is unnerving and it's just a great horror scene. Like, cause it's like you get the scariness of like looking out at something, being completely helpless to do it. And then the horrible realization that, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm my own worst enemy. Shit. Yeah. So it's really effective, and Homeless Hammer Lady is very scary. <laughs> I don't know why she appears so often, though. <laughs> yeah. And, like, at the end when he's on the ship, she's on the fucking ship for some reason. Does that imply, like, that was how she dressed, and was she around in, like, the 1500s? What? I go... My personal headcan is she was a homeless person who snuck into the hotel and tried squatting in the room, and it just didn't go well. Mm-hmm. 
And then she go- looks kind of like a hobo. She does. Yeah. They, and then the ghost just kind of used her in order to scare people. <laughs> and also, uh, this didn't happen like, oh, someone, some evil serial killer killed themselves in the room and that's why it's haunted. No, this hotel was evil week fucking one, we find out. Yeah. Exactly. Like, there wasn't some tragedy or inciting incident that made the room haunted. The room was just always haunted since it was fucking built. Which I kind of like, too. Like, yeah. you know, you don't have the usual, oh, the, this person, there's a demon in the yeah. house that was brought by cultists or something. No, it's yeah. just, it was an evil fucking room. Or like it was built on an Indian burial ground or some shit. <laughs> Nope, just an evil fucking room. And I think it works way better just because it doesn't try to explain anything or give some shocking backstory. It just, it's haunted. Here's a fucking homeless hammer lady. Why is she there? Uh, She's fucking there and she's fucking scary. (laughs) And, because I'm not big on ghost movies. They annoy me a lot. (laughs) That's fair. I don't find things scary that I could beat with water or fire. Why is it always just burn the house down? That's always the answer to like every ghost movie. Because the soul is linked to whatever. So if you yeah. burn the shit so you, out of it, it doesn't exist so anymore. If you burn the object, the ghost can move on or whatever. <laughs> but a lot of ghost movies too, there is an intro. Uh, I know some are going to be like, you don't see the ghost in this movie here. I'll get to that. You don't, you either don't see the ghost in the ghost movie, or it's just a person. Yeah, they don't try to do anything creative, like with J-horror and stuff. Like, the J-horror does ghosts way better than American. Uh, mo- oh, yeah, like the way the grudge moves and shit? Oh, yeah, like grudge moves. Obviously, the ring's a classic example, but... Uh, yeah, it's like they get creative, have the weird, creepy girls with the long hair, which has always been a Japanese staple. But like in American movies, it's either just people or it's like someone dressed up like they're in the 1800s and that's it. Or just smoke. Just smoke. Yeah. Ooh. But yeah, and that's the problem is they never really like show the ghost. There's no payoff to all that suspense. Like, which there has to be. And Grant, here they don't show it either, but they make up for that with the ghost literally, like, actively fucking with him. And actually talking to him, technically, through the phone. Yeah, the ghost has a per- The room itself has a personality. Yeah. Which makes up for the fact that you don't see it. And yes, you do see ghosts that are just people. But it's always... It's still at least fucked up in some way. Like, they look glitchy, or they look like they stepped out of a TV type deal. Mm-hmm. It's adding just that little extra detail that makes it more interesting to try and understand the monster. Yeah, it's really well done. Um. Also, the fact that the ghosts have a lot of dark humor. Most of the humor in this movie <laughs> really works. It really does. Like, it's not just the ghosts, too. Like, it's like, it's it's the main character, and um, Samuel L. Jackson's character has some really good lines as well. So... <laughs> Yeah, like, uh, one, one of our favorites is uh, when Samuel Jackson is trying to get Mike not to go into the room, he offer, he's like, as they go into the office, like, do you want a cigar? No, I don't smoke. Do you drink? I said I was a writer. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty great. I think we both forgot about that, and upon the rewatch, we just burst laughing. It was <laughs> it's such a good line. It is. <laughs> Uh, again, the ghost saying, you could always take our express exit, and there's just a fucking <laughs> news. It's so dark, but it makes me laugh yeah, every time. It's great, so. <laughs> and, and the thing is, too, I think the only scare that kind of doesn't work in the movie is the old man in the vent. Oh, yeah, that one looked really cheap. That one looks a little cheap. Like, it's it's well done, and it's a tense scene, but the monster itself could have been done a little better. I do like when he crashes back into the room. He's like, oh, I, what was it? It was like, I missed this place or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or it's like, welcome back. No, it, it, or something like, let's never do that again or some shit. Or No, it's like, I'm done with that or some shit. I don't know. It's pretty great. I forget. Yeah. <laughs> there's still more to talk about. It's just, I'm trying to think of if there's anything else I want to say about the ghosts or the humor and what. Yeah. But 
because it's just it's fantastic and well done so <laughs> it's a nice twist and a nice uh or yeah a nice twist on ghost movies and they do like get creative with it which is you know more than needs to be for a ghost movie like it's it's a well above the standards of other ghosts in ghost movies in america at least yeah also i should stop calling him mike and uh say john cusack just so yeah I actually say the actor's name well yeah, as I say, if you have nothing else to the ghost on the ghost, let's transition to John Cusack. <laughs> John Cusack does fucking fantastic. He does. He's great as the writer because at first he's fantastic at portraying this like asshole, this like dickwad who just uh, it, like and it, it's clear at the beginning too like he do, um that he oh what am I trying to say. Like, he's become kind of jaded to all this haunting stuff, because we see him try to go to another haunted hotel in the beginning or whatever, and he's just of the opinion that there are no ghosts, and, like, you know, all of this is just roadside attractions to make money and shit. I've never actually had a haunted thing at a hotel. And he was at a book signing, he's like, well, do you believe in ghosts? Do you want to see a ghost? He's like, I, I, I'm open to the possibility, but so far, you know, I've stayed in 10 hotels. Yeah, so... Um, but yeah, he, and he's a dick and all that. And like, he, he thinks he knows Samuel Jackson's spiel, but he doesn't. And I do love the fact that he becomes more sympathetic as the movie goes on because you do see him break down. You see his past, you see why he kind of became so jaded in life with his daughter dying and his dad getting dementia and basically telling him he's a shit writer and all that. Um, and yeah, he, he, the fact that he genuinely did love his daughter, like that scene with her breaking in the ash is heartbreaking because he just breaks down. He's like, no, you can't take her from me twice. I'm just like, oh, no. And once the daughter is revealed, you also do kind of realize the reason he went for all this goat because you when you see him at the book review, it's kind of you feel it's kind of implied that he's just doing this as a sellout thing. Mm -hmm. Like. Uh, he did write a, a drama book that was apparently very good. Yeah. But then he moved on to these, and it's... And you kind of get the idea that it's because he was trying to find an idea that ghosts do exist in order to believe that his daughter moved on to someone. Mm-hmm. Which is just like, fuck! <laughs> movie yeah it's like you didn't need this level of actual good character development but you did <laughs> you're it's a fucking ghost movie that makes you feel emotional <laughs> yeah it, it does have heart to it rather than and is a good just like fun house of horrors it is like i've always loved those style of movies like you know haunted house type horror movies like where it's a bunch of set pieces and shit <laughs> And I'll give John Cusack this. His acting does carry the movie because he's the only one for most of the runtime. Yeah, exactly. Like, think about that. It's mostly just him locked in a room, like, talking to, like, yelling at, sc screaming at ghosts that don't really respond to him. So. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he, he carries the film and does a fantastic job with the role because we looked him up afterwards. Like, what has he been in lately? Because he's so good in this. <laughs> he just hasn't been doing much for some yeah. reason. So <laughs> he does great. And all the other actors do, in their bit parts do great as well. I mean, Samuel L. Jackson always does a good job. I don't think I've ever seen a bad performance from him, even in shit movies. Well, segue kind of into technical stuff with one thing. This movie is PG 13. Yeah. We looked it up afterwards and we were very surprised. We thought it, we just assumed it was R. like I mean, people say, fuck, and there's a lot of drinking and, there's some bloody bodies. There are some fucked up bodies. Um, now, here's the thing. I don't know if this is like an unrated version or something, because I know at a certain point there was an unrated DVD that was released that restored a couple stuff. So I don't know if that was originally b more brief or less graphic, because they, they, they're fucked well, up. Like, there's blood everywhere. You see their throats slit and shit. Like, well... Here's the thing. On my Blu-ray copy, it says PG-13. It does not say it's the unrated version. Okay. All right. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, we're just... Not, nothing really too much on that. We're just surprised. <laughs> that they're... Like, um... Especially with the director's cut ending, um... Mike's burnt body in the back of Samuel Jackson's car, even though it's only on screen for like two seconds, yeah. 
it's a really detailed body and it's fucked up. <laughs> Same with his daughter turning to ash. Like you, when she like starts like, uh, like di- what's the word dissipating or whatever. Like you see her like leg fall down and like the bones and shit. <laughs> But there's no blood. But there's no blood. So. <laughs> I mean, sure, we have pictures of people with, uh, well, one dude who slit his wrist and then tried yeah. to sew himself back together. <laughs> but Justin, that's in black and white. Got me there. <laughs> Hold on, wait, do we see red blood besides when he hurts his hand? I don't know if we do, actually. Because we see it under a black light, but that's blue and uh, yeah. a lighter blue. <laughs> yep. So. The photos are black and white. <gasps> that's how they got around it. That's fucked up. Isn't it? <laughs> Thanks, MPAA. Uh... <laughs> I swear you saw some red blood. I don't know. You might have. Like, you might have seen, like, flashes of it, but I don't think it's on screen for longer than, like, a second if you do. Because when he hurts his hand, you do see the blood and shit. Like, you see it dripping off and hitting the floor and stuff. So. Yeah, but that's not gore that uh, can get you an R. Exactly. (laughs) That's just relatable pain. Exactly. And that's what makes it the worst. It's always the little things that hurt the worst. (laughs) Uh. And before getting into, like, all the shit they do to the room, that's just, that's clearly practical and fucking well done. Mm -hmm. There's something that I hope was a cognitive choice. Okay. Because at the opening of the movie, the editing is really fast. Is it? It is. Like, when he first goes into the the quote-unquote haunted hotel... Mm, like the 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 one at the beginning that was fake. Yeah, the one at the beginning, not for not uh the dolphin. Mm-hmm. The editing is really fast, and like it still has the normal shots you would see in a movie about like this haunted in place, like the looking up at the the way it pans up to the stairs to look up at the act where all the people died or whatever. Yep. But it's edited quickly, almost like you're in the mind of Mike. Who is jaded at this point? It's like, okay, yeah, up yeah. there, ooh, whatever. Kind of just going through the motions it? or whatnot. Uh huh. And I did also like that when he's doing the uh, bookstore interview, he talks about his, his way of looking for ghosts and it actually cuts back to him at the hotel doing all those things instead of having them as two separate things. Yeah, okay. That's a good catch. I didn't notice that. So the egg's just a little more faster, a little more fast paced. Yeah, until he gets in the room when creepy shit starts to happen, and then it calms down and lets you lets everything sink in. Uh, okay, all right, that's interesting. So I hope that's a, I'm hoping that's the reasoning. I hope so as well. <laughs> there is a commentary track which I might listen to after we were well at some point later this week. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just I just like that part of the editing. I thought that was cool. Hmm. No, wait, wait, fuck this room, am I right? Oh my god. What they do to this room, and we were talking about this during the movie as well, um, we were like, continuity in like a bottleneck movie or episode has to be a bitch. And especially with this movie with how much shit John Cusack knocks over and like stuff falling around and the ghosts doing shit, like, they had to have filmed this in order because it would have, it wouldn't make sense otherwise. It would have been possible. Yeah. I think. With how much they destroy the room. And then after a certain point, like, they, they cover it with, like, fake snow and shit because it's cold. Um, and, then at one, and then at one point, you know, the painting comes out and the whole room's just flooded with water and shit. And, like, the, the And whole... you see him. He takes that fucking hit of water. Oh, yeah. Like, you can tell that they actually fucking flooded the place and hit him with water. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> insane. The way he ragdolls, I... I hope he was okay. Like, I hope nothing uh, yeah. went wrong there. Honestly, because it, lo- it looked painful. Probably because it actually was. Uh, it looked dangerous because it probably <laughs> was. <laughs> and then, like, at the end, when the room is finally, like, done, like, the entire thing is basically just ash or whatever, and there's pillars all over the place, all the furniture's just destroyed, everything's just a pile on the floor. It's insane. And then th- yeah. the part for the post office as well, it's like they, they had to have built a set inside of a set in order to fucking get that. Which a part of me wonders if uh, they 
shot the other post office scenes at the same time, and that post office set was still the one in the set. Yeah, <laughs> like like it was the same set. Like they never change it. That would make sense. Just be easier that way. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you have to destroy the damn thing. Yeah. So, so yeah. <laughs> Hope you don't have to go back for reshoots. <laughs> honestly, honestly, that would be the other thing. Like, you'd have to, like, rebuild only part of the set if you needed reshoots, honestly. Well, no, if you need to reshoot the post office, he goes all around and the camera yeah. sees all over. You'd have to rebuild the whole thing. So good on them for planning all that shit out, because it turned out really impressive. Yeah, that moment is... Oh, that's the story bit we didn't talk about, how yeah. good that fake out is. Yeah, it's it's insane because um, I think what helped too, and you mentioned this during the movie as well, is what helps the fake out is they double down on it. Yeah, because a lot of movies with a fake out like that, it it's maybe five minutes, two to five minutes before they go like, nah, we're just kidding. Yeah. No, like here, literal like weeks pass before it's finally revealed that he's never left the room yeah it's like 10 or 15 minutes of runtime yeah it's insane like literally like he wakes up from the hospital recovers from his injuries sees his wife goes out to dinner and then writes an entire fucking novel yeah, like writes a novel is getting his life back together and then it happens. It's like, yeah, nah, we're fucking with you. <laughs> and it, it's great, too. That just adds to the level of pettiness of the ghost is they would go to that length just to fuck with him. Like they would be that patient, wait weeks just to reveal. Ha ha. Fuck you. Yeah, it's honestly just. It's probably one of the best fake outs I've seen in a movie. It really is. It's so well done. Because the first time I saw the movie, I really wondered. I'm like, wait a minute. Is like, is this actually happening? What the fuck? Because that feels like an actual ending to the movie. That, oh, it was all a dream and he yeah. has now become a better person. It does. Or like they do. The, I was thinking, like, do they do the one thing where like the ghost actually followed him home or something? But no, it's just a really clever fake out. <laughs> Anything else you have to say on the practical effects? Nothing else. It all just looks so good. Yeah. Um, it just looks so good and just everything's so well done. It's well shot, well written. All the actors do a great job and it's such a good movie. Um, trying to think if there's... Yeah, if you... Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was just saying I'm trying to think if there's actually anything else we need to say on it. I think that's it, huh? There is one question I have. Okay. If the ghosts were lying... About the loop thing? About what? The loop thing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, okay, they reset the room. Everything's back to where it was. However, the wife was outside, so time has passed. Because they said she'll be here in five minutes. Yeah, and also we see everyone outside. Uh... So we don't know how long it took her to get there, but time is passing. Uh... Okay, so they could have just reset the room. And, yeah, you don't know, do you, really? Because he could have... Because it, it doesn't matter either way because most people would just fall into despair and kill themselves at that point. But wouldn't that just yeah. be an extra layer of dickness that they totally could have gotten out? Yeah, they told they might have been able to outlast this. But, you know, the ghosts aren't going to fucking say that. No, <laughs> that very well could be a thing. Okay. Yeah, I... <laughs> That was something I was thinking about today. I was like, wait a minute. Time did actually pass, though. Yeah. Yes, time isn't going normally, obviously. But, like, again, he was gone for yeah. a week at least. Time is all fucky-wucky, but at least, at the very least, the real timeline is still going on to some degree. <laughs> yeah, real time was still passing, so maybe there was a chance to beat the room without burning it all to the ground. But, you know, burning it is way faster. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, and that's the thing that's kind of brilliant about the movie, too, is it's like it doesn't answer any of these questions and really leaves you to wonder about how the room works and makes your mind wander and like, well, what about this? What about this? We don't know. So... <laughs> makes it spoopy it does it's great so <laughs> but yeah we definitely highly recommend this movie so yeah even with us spoiling it it's still a fun ride if you yeah. enjoy horror movies 
Like, Justin has seen the movie, what, four times now, I think, or five? Four or five. And it still hasn't gotten old, so. It really hasn't. That's such a good fucking <laughs> Yeah. So we definitely recommend 1408. Um, if you're if if you're um, having fun this Halloween and you need a good ghost movie, put that bitch on. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I don't think there's a wheel spin for this one. So. There isn't because this is our cheat episode special. So uh, yeah, we'll uh... wait. There oh. is wheel spin. Oh. There is because oh. of what starts next month. <gasps> oh. Oh. <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh, next episode will be Wednesday in November because it's movie month finally. Woo! So, uh, let's, uh, spin the wheel because we totally haven't already recorded it. Okay. All right. What did we get? It's Mind Game. Ah, uh, starting out with Mind Game. Yes, um, the setup for Movie Month, it is, uh, I made a list of movies Cameron has never seen that are either weird, fucked up, or just kind of have good twists and turns. Should I say what was on the wheel? Uh, sure, I, I mean, it... I'm pretty sure we say it in Movie Month anyway, so. We do, but, you know, we, we can say up here as well so people can come back. Bam. Okay. Oh, yeah, you called it Twist, Turns, and Drug-Fueled Nightmares. Yep. Even though I think there's only one horror movie. Well, I mean, Drug-Fueled Nightmares, there was a lot of trippy shit in the movies that we watched, especially Mind Game and Mandy. Yep. Okay, so, yeah, we have Mind Game, Mandy, uh, Old Boy, Bad Times at the El Royale, Heathers, The Void, Lucky Number Slevin, and Running Scared. Mm -hmm. Not the 50s Running Scares from uh, two. 2006? It's I around think? the same time as 1408. I forget the exact... Name. I think it's 2006. Let me look that up and see if you're right again. Uh, 06, good job! Boom. Awesome. Hey, you're remembering dates better than you usually are lately. I'm impressed. Oh, uh, it's because I had to uh, look up the movie yesterday. Uh, so. Fair. <laughs> but yeah, so next is movie month. It's going to be eight movies long, as if you were able to count... I know some of you are like Cameron, so don't worry. <laughs> you know, just because you're right. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have movie month, and then December we'll have our we'll be back on our usual schedule with uh, the second half of Fringe season three and whatever movies we land on. I think we're oh, what was Lone Wolf and Cub should be the next movie. After movie month. I think that so. Was, I was just saying, are you sure you want to spoil that? Cause we well, because Throne of Blood's already out. It came out in October. Uh, okay. Yep, yep. This is the last thing of October. Sorry, I forgot the timeline. You're right. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Time is a flat circle. <laughs> Time is irrelevant here in 2021. Uh. <laughs> and, yeah, we'll have more Fringe, the second half of Fringe Season 3. We haven't even recorded... We're not even done with the first part of Season 3 at the blow yeah. of recording. Just spoiler. Yeah. Just a little timeline fucky-wuckiness. Yeah, we don't record the show in order at all, so... <laughs> we don't, because TV shows suck. Uh, <laughs> well, they don't suck. They're just a bitch to do, because it's... That's why they suck. It's, it's long to record, and it's long to edit, basically. <laughs> and it's long to watch. <laughs> yep. Like, inherently, that's just how it is, so... Um, we'll do, we're debating if we'll do a short series after, uh, Fringe Season 3, or we'll do something special, because it would land on the, uh, 24th, which is our anniversary yep. as well. We were before Jesus. <laughs> It'll be, what, four years? I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, our an yeah, four. Our, our anniversary is Christmas Eve. That's hilarious. <laughs> so we'll have that. I forget are we doing one for the last week of december have we decided that i think we last time we said yes okay yeah because so. it's just gonna be a movie that's it yeah it's just gonna be a movie easy done then we can take our usual break in january and then we'll take our break in january that's the rest of this year out so enjoy movie month yep. starting wednesday of next week 
God, it's eh. it's hard to yep. believe that it's midway through September, honestly. Uh, well, it's the end of October when this is released. True, true. Uh, so either way, happy Halloween. Uh, ending things is hard on Cinema Boulette. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say it. It's fun to say. It is. It is. I have to pass out, go to work, and <laughs> at the Tokyo Godfathers episode before release, and then go see a movie. Yeah, and I'm going to see the movie as well. Yay. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're Promare's playing in theaters again yes. at time of recording, so we're both going to go see it in theaters. I'm going to see it again in theaters. Cameron's finally going to see it in theaters because the pandemic can't stop him this time. God damn it, no. <laughs> Cinema is closed due to. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, uh, I don't know how. I... Do you want to say happy Halloween? Happy.